and welcome to Energy Gal Meditations. My name is Lisa. And I don't know if you can hear, but outside of my studio today, there is quite a storm raging. It happens to be Monday, Memorial Day in the United States of America. And yeah, we've got a lot of wind out there. And it's actually quite appropriate because in a couple of minutes, I'm going to be filming and creating the guided meditation, which for this week I sensed was all about us um, really embodying the mountain, embodying the stability, the immovability, and this strength and peace like a mountain has. So anyway, you'll want to check that out if you haven't already. But I also got this other vision as I was preparing today, and it's this. Things are changing really, really fast, and there's so much information out there and you know, information that we've held onto in our minds, in our DNA, in our bodies. We've believed that these things are the way that it is for so long, maybe centuries, you know, down the family line. And I think we're coming into a season of hmm, being open to questioning, just out of curiosity, if what we are thinking we believe anymore. The visual that I got was that we have been floating in this beautiful hot air balloon and all sorts of different colors or maybe yours is just one color or maybe it's got a star on it or, um, you know, a big uh, a butterfly. OK, but I see us in this each person in a balloon, a hot air balloon, and some people are tethered a little closer to the ground. And some people are tethered further from the ground, but the fact of the matter is so many of us are tethered to the ground still. And so when storms happen, we get bashed. That was a lot of thunder right there. We get bashed back and forth. And so what I'm encouraging us to do and what I believe is going to be happening in this season is saying, so how much of this tethering do I want to, you know, to still be um, in partnership with? How much do I still want to be in partnership with some of the things that I'm thinking? You know, we think that every thought that we have is our thought. I was talking with someone the other day who said, I thought this and then I thought this and then I thought that. And at the end of it, I said, well, what if, what if it wasn't really, you know, your thoughts? What if they're just thoughts that are floating through the air and you're picking up on them? We take such ownership of these thoughts. I know that's kind of a radical thing to think, but oftentimes what I'll do is I'll observe my thoughts and then I'll think, okay, do I want to own that one? You know, I don't call them my thoughts. I just observe these thoughts and then think, yeah, I'm pretty sure that one isn't mine. Nope, that one isn't mine. How do I know if they're mine or not? Um, well, if they're mean to me or mean to others, they're not my thoughts. <laughs> because Christ consciousness, which is my true identity, the, the universal divine love consciousness, which is my true identity, doesn't think things like that. That's just old paradigm, or it's the pain body, it's trauma still speaking. It's this desire to keep myself safe tucked inside with this illusion of safety and security. So I know I ramble a bit, but I guess if, if I was going to unpack for us a bit of encouragement, it would be become aware of your thoughts. Become aware of your thoughts and don't take so much ownership of these thoughts originated in me and I'm going to invest a lot in them. I'm going to believe these thoughts to be true. I would encourage you to become aware, intentionally aware of the thoughts that you're having and then say, do I want to partner with this? You know, I used to tell tell my clients, ask yourself, is this true? But a lot of times, for example, when I was going through really difficult disordered eating, I would hear things like, you shouldn't eat that, you're just fat. And when I thought, well, is that true? I thought, yeah, it is true. So I started changing whether it was true or not. It, I believed it to be true. I couldn't trust myself in that way. So I started saying, well, do I wanna partner with that thought? 
Do I want to continue to give energy, give a home in my space to that thought? Do I continue to want to have this thought abide in my home, in my auric field, in my body, in my energies? And if not, you can just show it the door and say, not anymore. I don't partner with that thought. And then that way, when it comes knocking, you can say, oh yeah, you, you've entered the wrong house. You've, you're knocking on the wrong door. This isn't your house anymore. You know, I call them squatters. If they're thoughts that come in and think that they can just hang out, I just think, uh, no. So I'm very particular. You know, everybody's so bound up about having these boundaries between people. I guess I'm not quite so uptight about that, only in that I don't think there is any other. There is no separation, really. What I'm more uh, diligent about, intentional about, is, make, is the boundaries that I have with the thoughts that I'm having. Are these thoughts that I want to partner with? Are these thoughts that I want to say, yes, I want to embody that. I want to be that. So um, anyway, for me personally, what I saw myself as being in this hot air balloon and the tethers of these big thought patterns, when I stopped partnering with them and I stopped giving them my chi, I stopped giving them my essence, I stopped giving them my energy and my attention, they started to wither. I didn't have to cut them. They just stopped having any life force in them. And I was able to float higher and higher and higher. And then there came a time, and I digress now, but there came a time when I still wasn't able to go as high up in the clouds above the storm as I wanted to. And I realized that I had things actually in the uh, wicker basket that I was sitting in that was floating me and that I could let go of. And I envisioned them as like these tomes, these large books full of all sorts of information, or they were pieces of my identity that I thought, oh my God, without this, I'll die. And I got to the point where I realized that's actually not something I want to partner with. I don't have to. And then I would toss it over, uh, over the wicker basket in my imagination and I'd float higher and higher. So... Well, as you can see, I've got quite a creative mind. I think a lot creatively. I just find that it is much more efficient for me on my healing journey if I tap into the, um, oh, what's it? I'm using my left hand, my right brain, the creative brain, the one that's the colors and shapes and uses wild imagination. If I use my brain for that, for my healing, and less leaning on the logical aspect, the linear part of my brain. I think they work in tandem very well, but I'm certainly not afraid to tap into the creativity. And you had to have heard that. That was a very big thunderstorm. So like I said, it is Monday as I film this. Friday is when it will be uh, uploaded, I think. And I just want to encourage you for a few minutes and let you know that there is a lot that's going to be going on and a lot of it starts right in our own minds. You create your life by the things that you're thinking. So become more intentional, more aware of the things that you're thinking and then whether it is that you want to partner with those things that you're thinking. And wow, will you really realize some freedom there. And as always, if I can be of assistance to you on your journey, whether it's through healing, awakening, ascension, relationships, reconnecting with yourself, please check any of the links below. And I would love to come alongside of you, encourage you, and just shine some light and help you to remember who you are and why it is that you are here. So everyone take care and I wish you all the best and peace be with you.